Welcome to Kendo UI for jQuery, a course to help you get started with using the Kendo UI set of components and features in your own applications. My name is Alex Iskind, and I've been training developers like you in modern web technologies for a few years now, and I'll be taking you on this journey today. In this course, we'll take the approach that puts you in the shoes of an engineer that's adding features to an existing application for a client, RPS. Now, you've already developed version one of the RPS project tracker. It's a web application to track issues. And now your client wants you to add more features and updating the existing application to version two. Throughout this course, we'll incorporate components and features from the Kendo UI library into an existing jQuery application. You'll be doing some exercises in this course, so make sure you download the code base to help you get started. We'll look at the before and after states of the application so you have an idea of what the goal of each exercise is. We'll start out by adding basic Kendo UI components to the application and you'll see how to harness the power of Kendo UI in a matter of minutes. This will show you how to install and use the buttons, dropdowns, sliders, and more. Then we'll get into more advanced components like the chart and the grid. Now, components don't live in isolation, and it's important to know how they interact with each other. So we'll see how to incorporate the Kendo UI components to interact with an existing functionality of an application and with each other. Finally, we'll see how we can change the theme of all the components all at once. We'll also be able to build our own theme and we'll use other styling options that come with Kendo. By the end of this course, you'll know how to navigate the Kendo UI for jQuery documentation and demos, how to install new component modules, and how to incorporate components into your jQuery application. Kendo UI for jQuery is a library designed to offer a full breadth of UI components and UI related features that give developers everything they may need in a single toolkit. And while Kendo is known for their extensive set of UI components, Kendo UI for jQuery is more than just UI widgets. Along with the UI components, Kendo includes optional tools and features that help development. Features like a front-end abstraction layer called Data Source, which offers a very powerful way to perform data operations that also integrates with advanced components like the grid, for example. Client-side validation is also built in, as well as globalization for simplifying the creation of multilingual apps. There are also other useful features like PDF and Excel export, drag and drop, and the templating engine that are all optional, but it's nice to know that they're there. Kendo for jQuery is designed to be modular. As we'll see in this course, you can use only the components that you need in order to keep your code base as light as possible. It also gives you the options on how components are included in your application, whether you download them and package them with your application, or link them in via a content distribution network, or add them using NPM packages. You can do all those with Kendo UI for jQuery. There are three other huge benefits to using Kendo that I'd like to mention. It's backed by a team of developers with unlimited professional support. There are frequent updates to the library, and there's an extensive documentation set. This is a beginner level course for those that are getting introduced to the Kendo UI for jQuery library. However, it is aimed at those developers who already know jQuery and JavaScript concepts before jumping into this course. This means understanding how to use jQuery selectors, events, and document events like the document ready event. You don't need any prior Kendo UI experience or knowledge. We'll cover all that you need in this course. The same goes for Bootstrap. We'll be using Bootstrap for initial styling and layout, but it's not required knowledge. Now the software you're going to need to have installed in your machine is pretty self-explanatory, but let's go through it real quick here. You're gonna to need to have Node installed, and that's the latest LTS version of Node for long-term support. And I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Code as my editor here. However, you don't have to use Visual Studio Code. You can use whatever editor you feel comfortable with. Let's go over some resources that you should have handy while working on this course. There are some sample applications that you'll want to download, We'll come back to that and I'll show you where to get them and how to run them in a little bit. For now, let's look at three web pages that you will keep open. Now, it could get a little overwhelming looking at the documentation site because there are so many options. So I want to narrow it down for you. First and foremost, you wanna have the documentation for all the widgets and features. If we start out at www.telerik.com, you wanna to go to all products, Kendo UI, UI for jQuery, click on docs and support, and then over here under resources, click on documentation. Here you'll be able to browse the documentation. The getting started guide is here, the introduction, and here's the documentation for widgets. We'll be going through a lot of this in this course, as well as some other features down here. The other resource you wanna have open is the demos. So let me go back out to telerik.com. 
all products, UI for jQuery, docs and support, and under resources here, you want to look at demos. You can also navigate directly to this URL, demos.telerik.com slash kendoui. Here you have sample applications that are written with Kendo UI for jQuery. These run in the browser, and you can also get the source code for these by clicking this available on GitHub. Let's go back. What I really want you to keep track of here is if you tap on one of these widgets here, like Grid, for example, this will take you to this interface where you can actually get previews of all the widgets and some interesting ways to use them that might not be in the documentation. For example, you have quick and easy access to some of the most popular ways and features to use these components. This will give you an overview of all the components in their categories, and it'll also tell you which components are new. You have a little new green icon there. So those are the three pages I want you to look at. The documentation set, the demo applications, and then the demos of all the widgets, which is this page right here. I'll be referring to these throughout the course, so you should probably have them open. Kendo UI comes in two different flavors or packaging options. There's Kendo UI Core and then there's Kendo UI Professional. The core version is open source. You can use it for commercial projects that don't require dedicated technical support or line of business style functionality. What does that mean? That means components like the grid, chart, scheduler. These are the more advanced components. They're not included in Kendo UI Core. Kendo UI Core is free and it comes in a different package than Kendo UI Professional. We'll see more of this later on. Now, about Kendo UI Professional, this includes professional components like the chart, like the grid, and the scheduler, and other ones. I'll show you that in a second. It also includes expert and timely technical support. This is a paid product, but the price is pretty competitive. In the previous video, I showed you this page. These are the demos available, and this is the page we'll be referring to quite often components like the grid, the spreadsheet, and more advanced features like the drawing API, PDF export, chat, and charts. Those all come with the pro package. If you want a comprehensive list of what's included in the pro package and what's not, you can go to this Kendo UI comparison sheet. On the left, you have the core version, and on the right, you have the full version or the pro version. And here you can see that the core version does come with a lot of components and a lot of features but the pro version has quite a bit more. In this course, we'll be using some components from the core version, but I'll be using the pro package because that's the package that has our advanced components, which I'll demonstrate in this course as well. Before we start coding, we need to see what we're coding. Let's take a quick trip of the project tracker. Here's the dashboard page of the project tracker where we can see active issues and some brief statistics about the total issues in the system here at the top, we can filter by a time period, whether it's the last three months, six months, or one year. At the bottom, you have a chart here that displays the open items versus closed items. We're going to be implementing all of this in this course. We can also filter by user, and all the filters interact with each other and are taken into account to display the active issues and the chart. Now, on the backlog page, we have a grid view of all the issues that's pageable, and we can filter by either my items or open items or close items. Here we can add new items if we need to. And there's our new item. I can go into the details for each of the items and edit the details. Everything is saved on the fly, and I can have an item type, which I'll state as a bug. Status will be open. The estimate is a rough estimate of the time that it's gonna take to complete the bug and I can give this a priority. I can also pick an assignee for this particular bug, and I have a tabbed interface at the top, which we're also gonna implement, that allows me to add tasks, complete the tasks, or change the task names, or delete the tasks. And I also have a comments section called Chit Chat. Here I can just add comments to other people's items or to my own item. That's a quick tour of the application that we're gonna be working with.